Thank you so much, Pastor Laddie. This is a, um, a message today uh, inviting the Holy Spirit to, to prepare our hearts, to prepare our hearts to receive this message that I believe is from the heart of God. It is from the Father's heart. And I probably will look at my notes because... Um, as always, I never really prepare my classes, although Pastor Ladia asked me at the beginning of the week, because I just wait until the last minute and then I say, okay, Holy Spirit, because he changes things anyway. <laughs> okay, so this morning I woke up, I said, okay, it's eight o'clock, I don't have much time. <laughs> so he gave me this word uh, for me to, to, to hold on to and each one just write down whatever revelation, because you know, I can share the word, but the Holy Spirit will go further with you. You know, he will go further with you. And it's for edification. It's to edify us and to share. All right. So the title of this, of the, the teaching today is from the heart of God, from the heart of God. It's the power of communication. The power of communication. Um. And I just want to give you a definition of communication. Communication is relationship. It's relationship. And it can be verbal. That's when we listen. And when we say the word to listen, it's like, for example, Jesus always spent time with his father and he listened. To listen isn't just to hear. To listen is to hear with the intention of following it through. To listen is to pay attention. Here I can hear many noises. I can hear the traffic. I can hear. But if I'm listening to you, I am paying attention to your words. So communication can be verbal. It can be written. I love writing. And I know Pastor Ladi too. Many of us like to write. It can be writing. It can be non-verbal. It can be through observation. An attitude on a person's face can communicate to me what they are feeling in their hearts. So the power of communication. And when we look at Genesis, the first chapter of Genesis, we see the communication between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Father created the heavens and the earth. And the Holy Spirit was hovering he was just waiting. What was he waiting for? He was waiting for the word of life. He was waiting for instructions. That's when the father said, let there be light. Look at the communication between the father, son, and Holy Spirit. And even when he says in, in Genesis, let us make man in our image. There was a communication between the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to speak, we're going to see the spiritual, which is the most important, and in the natural, just like Pastor Laddie said, practical, write down. We're going to look at the practical, what the power of communication in our relationships with our husbands, with our children, with neighbors, with everybody. And first and foremost, with the Lord. This is Father's heart. I want us to read 1 Corinthians Chapter 1, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. Says, God is faithful. I'll wait until people come to it. Chapter 1, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. God is faithful. By whom we were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus. Speak, Jesus. God is faithful by whom all of us, this is our calling. This is our calling. It's fellowship of him. So we speak Jesus in our fellowship, the Holy Spirit. We speak Jesus. In our fellowship with the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you orphans. And my father is going to send you the Holy Spirit who's going to be with you forever. 
not just the three years that, that Jesus was on, on the earth, forever. He lives with us and in us. That's the Holy Spirit. So our calling, we can have many callings, but the principal call on our lives is fellowship with Jesus. And in John chapter 17, verse 3, Jesus himself says, this is eternal life, to know. When there is communication, there is a knowing. When we communicate with our spouses, or when we communicate, we come to know, like a, you know, like a, a, a girl and a boy, if they're just, you know, uh, beginning a friendship, they'll probably spend about uh, three hours in the coffee shop just getting to know each other, listening. What do you like? Oh, do you look? Oh, I like that too. Just communicating, communicating. They, they don't care about what's happening. There's no distraction. They will just listen, listen and share uh, with each other. So today, uh, communication is relationship and fellowship. Fellowship here in Acts chapter 2, here in Acts chapter 2, this is the Father's heart. Chapter 2, verse 42, the word says, and they, that's the, the apostles, the disciples, they continued, continued. So communication is something continual. It's continual. It's steadfast. It's not just a one thing. It's just not a, a one visual one night on a Sunday. It's continuous. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles, apostles' doctrine. What is the apostles' doctrine? The word. The word of life. The word of God. They continued steadfastly in the word. And fellowship. Fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayer. So here we see. That the apostle, the, the example, they were steadfast in the word. Jesus, he listened to the word, the word in fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Here, I would just like to read that here, a note in my Bible, it says the following about fellowship. It's called koinonia. I think I've sp that's in, uh, in, in Hebrew. And it says the following, the followers of Jesus, that's us, we're disciples, the followers of Jesus who had been baptized by the Holy Spirit, New Testament, where in the New Testament, as Pastor Laddie said, what a privilege, we have the Holy Spirit. So the followers of Jesus who had been baptized by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit literally devoted themselves to communication and this is the word, unity, unity. They devoted themselves to communication and unity with God and with each other. This is beautiful. Koinonia literally denotes a deep sense of spiritual unity a spiritual communion with the Lord and with each other. This is Father's heart. And I, I, I'm just drinking it in myself. I need, to, I need to receive it in my own heart. Because Jesus, Jesus said in chapter 17, I know we know the, these, these words, but we're talking today about the Father's heart. We were called, we were called to have unity, to have communication with him and with his son, Jesus. So in John chapter 17, uh, it says in verse three, I believe. Uh, no, excuse me, it's not verse three. It is in verse uh, 21, chapter 17, verse 21. This is Jesus' prayer to the Father for all believers. That's the title. His prayer is that they, that we, all may be one. As you, Father, 
are in me and I in you. Why? So that they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. I'm going to read that again. Jesus' prayer is that we all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. Why? so that they also may be one in us. But here's the reason also. So that the world may believe that you sent me. In verse 23, it repeats. Jesus says, I in them, you in me. Why? So that we may be made perfect. This word perfect doesn't mean perfection only God is perfection this word perfect means complete God will complete his purpose in your life and in my life it's not being perfect it's being complete the purposes and plans that he has so here Jesus says I in them and you in me that we may be made perfect in one and that the world may know here in verse 21, it says, so that the world may believe. And in the, the verse 23, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved me as you. You have loved them as you have loved me. So there's a reason for unity, not only in our spiritual oneness, as we were saying that the apostles, the disciples continued steadfastly in communication, in communication uh, and fellowship with, uh, with God. So I'm trying not to go out of my, so literally this is the father's heart. This is Jesus's prayer for us, the believers, that we be one in him. In Ephesians, you don't have to look at it now, but it says in Ephesians chapter two, verses verse one and verse five and six although i will read it i will read it uh, in ephesians chapter two verses one uh, uh chapter two ver uh, ephesians two hmm, let me see chapter one where am i aha uh -huh. Yes, ch uh, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, and you, that's us, that's Father, God, our Father, he has made us alive who were together, who were dead in trespasses and in sins. So God, our Father, has made us alive. But listen to chapter to verse 5. Even when we were dead in trespasses, what did Father do? He made us alive together. That's unity. He made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. I love that word together. God, Father has made us alive together with Christ. Here it says with Christ. And in verse 6, it says, and Father has raised us up together. Here we see the word together again unity and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus you can read the I'll read the rest seven why why has he raised us up together in Christ why has father made us alive together with Jesus so that this is the reason verse seven a father always tells his children don't touch the stove because you might burn your finger. He gives us reasons. So he's raised up together so that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards each one of us in Christ Jesus. Let's speak Jesus, as Pastor Lady said. Let's speak Jesus. It's by God's grace. Verse 8, for by grace... We have been saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It's a gift. It's a present. It's the gift of God. Not for works, lest anyone should boast. For we are what? 
We are God's workmanship, created in Christ for good works, which God prepared before that we should walk in them. So here, for me, for us, the most important thing, the power of communication, it begins with communication. What happened with Eve? What happened in, with Eve in the Garden of Eden? She took action. She didn't consult with Adam. They knew that they shouldn't take of the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So she heard, she listened, to, she listened to, to, the, to the enemy, to Satan. And, you know, it says, and she gave to Adam. She didn't even consult with him. She didn't communicate with him. She didn't, how many times do we do something and we don't communicate with our spouse, with our friend, with our, we don't communicate. So when the title is The Power of Communication, Jesus spent time with his father communicating. We saw that the first thing is, the first thing is to listen. I'm sure Jesus listened much more than he talked. And to listen is to hear with the intention to obey, to observe. How many times in the Old Testament? Listen and observe all that I am telling you. We've taken God's word and Father forgive us as an option. Oh, we read it. And so many times in the Spanish, it comes out so much clearer. When you, in English, we don't use the so that. And I know Pat Faith, she hung on to that word about over a year ago. When you see a that, it's so that. So we've just, we've just read, for example, that Jesus is praying, Father, that my desire for my believers, for the ones you have given me, that we, that I and them be one just as we are one, so that the world will believe. That's verse 21 and verse 23. So the world will know. There's a reason, and we lose the sense or the, the, the message when Father tells us to do something. There is always a so that. We don't read it in English, but look out for the so that's, because as a good father, he gives us instructions so that. So that's so important. So communication, the power of communication builds relationship, builds relationship. Let's, let's look at Ephesians chapter four. This is beautiful. Ephesians chapter four. I won't read the whole thing. I'll just read verses 15 and 16. And the and Pastor Laddie used the word today, grow. When we have communication and a relationship is formed, it builds growth. It builds growth. And notice in these two verses, the word growth. In verse 15, chapter 4, it says, Speak the truth in love. When we speak the truth to one another, what happens? We may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Sometimes we don't like to hear some remarks or comments, but we speak the truth in love. The truth hurts sometimes if someone says, oh, um, that dress looks awful on you, you know, and, and it really does. Uh, they're doing me a favor. They're saying it's just a bit too tight on you and it just, whatever. In the natural and in the supernatural, remember the apostles and the disciples came together, continued steadfastly in the doctrine of the, of the apostles, in the word. They, they continued in the word, in the breaking of bread and in prayers, in fellowship. In fellowship, sharing. Remember, fellowship is when you have an association, when you share interests. And we have interests. We have the interests of, of, of God. Our, you know, our eyes are fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And um, so here, when, it, when we speak the truth in love, what happens? We grow up in love. You know, when you have a relation, communication, a relationship is formed. There is a building. You can speak the truth in love. 
and the other person can receive it. They can receive it. And when we're filled, continue with the Holy Spirit, he can tell me something that's not right in my life. And I can receive it because he lives in me. So we speak the truth in love and we grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ. From whom? And you know, when we look at each other, there is no human being on the face of this earth that are so different as a man and a woman. You look at a man and you look at a woman. Physically, they are completely different. Emotionally, they are completely different. In their reasoning, in their intellect, they're different. And God said, this is good. This is so, so we don't expect to be the same when we communicate, when we're in fellowship, and we start building our relationships in the physical and in the natural. And it says, from whom the whole body joined and knit together. The word of God began with a marriage, Adam and Eve. The first miracle of Jesus was the, the, the wedding at Cana. And the end, the revelation, is the bride and the bridegroom. And it's the journey from Adam and Eve. And look how it finished. The bride and the bridegroom. So here it says, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, what does happens? It causes growth of the body for the edifying, the building up of itself in love. So all our relationship should be growing through communication, then relationship, then fellowshipping, and uh, uniting us uniting us this is father's heart this is jesus's heart that we be one and it's a journey abraham took that journey he began he listened he obeyed he left his town he didn't know where he was going then he said his wife was his sister he messed up he messed up bad but then when he was when we see his relationship with father and he said you know just save sodom and gomorrah even if there are only 10 or five, he was negotiating with, with Almighty God. That's a, an advancement in relationship. He'd been communicating with God. He'd been growing and building up his relationship with Father God to the point that when God said, give me your son, he didn't waver. He didn't ask. He listened paid attention he obeyed and that is when and i'll repeat it again which is so beautiful when abraham was just on the point of sacrificing his son the angel of the lord came and said stop now i know you fear me that word fear paul wilbur told me that once that word fear now i know you fear me in Hebrew means, now I know you worshipped me. Jesus worshipped his father. He listened and obeyed. Yes, it can be a song. Yes, it can be sharing the word. Yes, but Abraham and Jesus are two examples that the word fear, they obeyed. And not yesterday or tomorrow, immediately. Abraham set out immediately. He didn't say, oh, I think I had to get some donkeys. Maybe, you know, next week I'll ask my neighbor. No, immediately, immediately. And I'll give the example again. It's an old example. Through repetition, and for me, re repeating, you remember. If I'm in a restaurant, I'm having dinner. I put my handbag on the chair next to me. It's empty. And the Holy Spirit says to me, put your handbag on the floor. Well, possibly my first reaction, well, it's new. The floor's dirty. Why should I put my handbag on the floor? There's a chair here. I can put it on my chair. You know, that's like reaction. That's why we need to be spiritually minded, not kindly minded. Spiritually minded. So uh, let's say I'm obedient. I listen. <laughs> I listen. 
I don't understand. We will not always understand Father's instructions, but by the power of the Holy Spirit who is in us, who teaches us, comforts us when we mess up, guides us and helps us, we can obey. We can worship the Father in spirit and truth. We can obey. So I put my handbag on the floor. Ten minutes later, a thief comes into the restaurant, grabs anybody's bags that are sitting on, all the other women's bags that are on the chairs. Where's my handbag? It's on the floor. <laughs> but it's to listen with the intention to observe, not when I finish eating my dessert. Now, immediately, and that's a journey that I need to take and we need to take. I know I'm di digressing, but oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, because I'm speaking to my, myself. So it's the power of unity through communication, fellowship, building up. Oh, it's just so, so awesome. Jesus also said, I don't do anything. I don't do anything that I don't hear my father saying. That's communication. That's communication. That's obedience. I don't do. I don't. I don't do anything. I don't see my father doing. That's obedience. And then in John fifteen five, what does Jesus say? Without me, you can do nothing. Speak Jesus. Speak Jesus over everything. Speak Jesus when you go to the restaurant. Speak Jesus. Speak Jesus. So we're going to read also John chapter 14, 26. John chapter 14. And see the beauty. Jesus, thank you for sending your Holy Spirit. Here in John 14, chapter 26, Jesus is saying, the helper. The helper who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. What Pastor Ladi was saying today, in the name of Jesus, we receive salvation. In the name above every name, we receive tongues in the name of Jesus. So the help of the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you what? All things, everything. He's going to teach us everything if we ask him. If we're close to him, if we have communication with him, if we have that sweet fellowship with him, if we are being built up in him, he will teach us all things and bring us to our remembrance. How many things? All things, everything that I said to you, the word of life, the word of life. So when we don't know what to do, Maybe a person is speaking and telling me their problems, and I'm listening. My heart is saying, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to say? Bring me in remembrance. Give me your word. Then I'll probably say, you know, possibly it's the person who's, who's being picked on in their work. and they're, they're being picked on, and they're complaining. They say, well, you know, because we want sympathy from our brothers and sisters. Well, look at me. My supervisor is picking on me, this, that, and the other. So, boom, the Holy Spirit says to me, share this word with her or with him. The word says, whatever you do, do it all in the name of Jesus, giving glory to God. And whatever you do, Colossians 3.23, do it with all your heart as unto God, as unto me, and not unto man. That's the word of life. He brings into remembrance the word, the word that brings life into our situations, into people's hearts, in the name, in the, the name of Jesus. So I'm going to use the word that I used a couple of years ago, even when we finish Zoom, even when we finish even a conversation with our husbands or our children. I will, I'm going to send this by WhatsApp after this session, uh, a word, a prophetic word given in 2017 that really ministered to my heart, okay? I'll do it afterwards. And the word is, when we finish Zoom, uh, 
instead of going and going getting your coffee and your lunch, just stay five minutes and linger. Linger. Why linger? Holy Spirit, what were you telling me today? What did you want to tell me today? He'll tell you. Then I'll say, then I'll write it down. Like Pastor Laddie says, you write it down. Then I'll say, Holy Spirit, seal that word in my heart. Because we are forgetful. We are forgetful, just like children. We forget. Seal that word in my heart. And then during the week, I'll call Pastor Laddie. I say, oh, Pastor Laddie, you know, on, on Sunday when you were sharing this, that, the other, oh, and I'll share what the Holy Spirit put on my heart. And why is it important to share? Because remember, the in Acts, the apostles continued steadfastly in the fellowship. When we, stay, when we share and listen to this in Malachi chapter 3, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. That's not in my notes. <laughs> in Malachi chapter 3, uh -huh, verses 16, uh, 16 and 17. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, the title is A Book of Remembrance. These are like you and me, or Shanti and Pat Faith, or I don't know all your beautiful names, Kiki and, and Mushki. I don't know all your names. They're very difficult for me to answer sometimes, but all of us. This is a picture of Father looking at us when we come together, whether it's by telephone, whether it's by writing a note. Like, you know, here in England, everybody writes a Christmas card. Everybody, it's always cards. It's not a call. Everybody always writes cards. It's a really idiosyncratic thing. So here it says, here is Father looking at us, you and me. He says, then those who feared, I wonder if that means worshipped. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. And the Lord, listen to what the Lord does. He doesn't just listen. He listens and hears. So, I mean, that's what you call an hyperbole, I think, in English, an exaggeration. If you listen, okay, you're hearing. But it says he not only listened, but he hears. So the Lord listened and heard us talking to one another. That's why, why don't you call, you know, why don't you call me during the week and say, wow, you know, oh, the Holy Spirit revealed this to me. Isn't that great? And I'd say, wow, I didn't see that. So, so a, the Lord listened and heard us. So a book of remembrance was written before Father for those who feared, who worshipped, who feared the Lord and who meditate on his name. Speak, Jesus. Meditate and share. Linger after you hear someone. Or even linger after your husband has said something very important to you. Linger. Ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to take from this com comment that my husband, my child, my son, my sister has made? Linger. Meditate on his name. And look at this, verse 17. And they, that's us. They shall be mine. We are, we're in the New Testament. We are, they are mine, says the Lord of hosts. And on the day that I make them my jewels, the fullness of our salvation, I will spare them. And in another translation, it says, they shall be mine, says the Lord. And on that day, I make them my treasure. There are different jewels. Look at the jewels spoken of in Revelation. The completion of our communication, fellowship, the building up. Where's the other one? The building up and the, um, the unity. The unity. Remember that from Adam up until Revelation, we come to the final, the final part of our marriage, the wedding feast, the unity of the body of the bridegroom and the bride. 
And now we go into the natural. We go into the, this is all the supernatural. And in the natural, I'll be very, very short. And I'm speaking to myself because I believe um, I'm not good at communication uh, in the sense that I need to continually learn. That's why the apostles continued steadfastly. We need co to continually cultivate our relationships with husband, with wife, with our children. Children, you cultivate a relationship with your children when they're five years old, now they're 15, then they're married and they're 25. To continually, this is a homework. <laughs> this is homework in to cultivate communication on a continual basis and speak to my fellow. Because as I decide, I take the decision. It's not a feeling. Sometimes we don't feel like communicating. Children can sometimes not feel like communicating. And I'm going to say something very special at the end. Because communication overflows and builds fellowship. And fellowship begins unity. And this is the Father's heart, that we be one in him, that families be united, not divided, a house divided, that a church, a communication. And so um, when I want to say something, and, and words are so important, because can you imagine, even Father said, let us confuse them. This is the communication that Father Son and Holy Spirit says in the Old Testament, let us confuse them. Confuse who? Confuse the people who said Babel, the Tower of Babel. We speak the same language. They only had one language, only one language, the power of language. Let us make a tower. And Father, Son and Holy Spirit says, let we confuse them because if they continue, they're going to achieve, achieve their purpose, the word. And I'm just going to say one thing now, the last thing. There is, um, I think it's the last thing. Um, it's, there's a, a book, a very good book, talking about relationships by Christian. But he gave something very important that we need, I need to examine my heart, examine our hearts. Um, if we need to ask for forgiveness and forgive. There is a story, he gave the story um, of, um, of his son, that he gave his son instructions, instructions that when daddy is speaking on the telephone, never interrupt, okay? You know, we have like principles and that we don't tell lies. Or we don't steal. These are, you know, these are things that they're immovable. We do not compromise on these things. So this was one of the things that we didn't do any compromise. So the father said to his son, never interrupt daddy when we're talking on the phone, because usually it's very important. So one day dad, uh, the, the, his son comes running in and says, daddy, daddy, daddy. And, and, and his father was speaking on the phone and, you know, speaking seriously. And he, he waved to his son as if to say, not now, not now, not now, son. Okay. But daddy, daddy, not now, son, go up to your room. And I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming to your room. So his son went up to his room. And um, his father finished his phone call, which was important. It was, you know, to the, somebody important, went up to the room. And um, he, he disciplined his son. He disciplined his son. And, you know, when we disciplined our children, we talk and sometimes we give a pam pam and then we hug our children. You know, we said, you know, that was was that right or was it wrong? And, and our children, they think they linger. They 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 think, well, yes, it wasn't the right thing to do. OK, to interrupt. So when he he disciplined his son, he came to hug his son and his son didn't want to be hugged. His son didn't want to be hugged. And his father said, well, what, what happened, son? And his son, he said, explained to him, I think he'd hurt his ear or something had happened that he needed attention, okay? 
But the father was so busy talking on the phone, he didn't take one moment to stop and listen to his son. And more than that, told him to go to his room. When the father had finished his conversation, went up to his room, disciplined him, and then expected a hug. He closed the spirit of his son. We can close spirits of people. I'm sorry, I know it's the last thing I'm saying. He closed the spirits, the spirits, uh, his uh, son's spirit. And then when he realized what he had done, he asked his son to forgive him. Son, please forgive me. Yeah. No, but, and he, it took him 45 minutes to converse with his son. And so finally the father said, have you forgiven me now, son? And the son said, yes, father. And he hugged his father. He opened his spirit. The last example he gave, he said, the same thing happened with me and my wife. When I used to, I never realized I had closed the spirit of my wife. And it took me two years to open it again. And this is the story. That when he and his wife were amongst friends, you know, Christian or non-Christian, once in a while, the husband would make a joke about his wife's diet. That closed her spirit. That joking. Sometimes we can joke something and a per we don't realize the effect on a person's spirit. And then just as it was only took 45 minutes for the son, because it was taken on the moment, the spare of the moment. But the wife probably never communicated, never communicated with her husband. Husband, it really upsets me when you make a joke about my my diet in front of all your friends. That's, there was no communication. That was deteriorating fellowship, that she was guarding something in her heart. She was closed. It took him two years to open her heart again. So my prayer is, Father, because of our words and communication, whether it's visual, whatever sign, whether it's a look on our face, if we have closed, a person's spirit. Forgive us, Father, in the name of Jesus. You are faithful and just to forgive us. And everyone who has ever said remarks, jokes, or, and I'll tell you the, the list. How do we close a person's spirit? By speaking harsh words, by belittling a person's opinions, oh, my opinion is better than yours, we can, we're not valued. By being unwilling to admit that we're wrong, no, I'm always right. I can, I can stunt a person and affect history. Taking a person for granted, taking a person for granted, making jokes or sarcastic comments at another person's extent, Not, not trusting a person. I can close their spirit. Well, I thought you trusted me, my love. I thought I could tell you that. And then the, the husband will say, well, you know, criticizes it. So not trusting a person, forcing a person to do something that's uncomfortable, being rude to that person in front of others, and ignoring a person's genuine needs. As in unimportant, not valuing another person's opinion or feelings, etc. So, Father, we know that in our own lives, even our children, we have possibly, you know, closed their spirits by, in a hasty thing, oh, said words, or people to us have closed our spirits. We forgive them. We let them go, Father, because then they speak of so much nowadays of traumas. But these are closed spirits. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word this morning. Let us linger, each one of us. Let's seal this word upon our hearts. Communication which breeds 
and builds fellowship, but above all, unity, oneness with you and with one another. In the name of Jesus, I pray that, Father, we pray for the unity of the body of Christ in one faith, in one love, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. God bless you. We're going to um, ask if anybody uh, would like to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their own Lord and personal Savior. I want to remind us today that he did say that on that last day, he wants to know you. He wants to know me. He wants fellowship and relationship and communication. And without relationship, without communication, there is no fellowship. So I'm asking whoever is listening to the sound of our voice. Uh, Zentra has spoken this morning and Jesus is speaking right now to come and fellowship with him, to come into relationship with him. Is that you? Are you looking for peace? He is the one, the way, the truth, and the life. He is the peace giver. He will give you peace that passes all understanding. No matter what you're going through, that peace will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. May I give you quickly an example. A prisoner was sentenced to life more than 20 years. And he said people ask him, how come he's so full of joy? He said, because of Jesus. Jesus has given him so much peace. He's not even thinking of the life sentence because he's already free in his heart. Is that you? Maybe the world has imprisoned you. Maybe your problems, maybe situation. But Jesus says, I have come to set the captives free. If you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal savior, will you pray after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today and I'm making an attempt. I'm stepping forward to say, Jesus, I want to know you. I repent of all my sins, all my past ways, and I ask you to forgive me my trespasses. Please lead me in your way, everlasting. I choose as an act of my will today to give my heart to you. I give my life to you. I give my will to you. And I ask you, Jesus, come and be the Lord of my life. Come and be my own personal savior and give me your Holy Spirit to teach me, to lead me and to show me the way. I repent now and I say forevermore, you are my Lord and my personal savior. From today onwards, I give my heart to you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If that is you, I want you to know that the Lord is pleased with you from today onwards. He will teach you and show you the way. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if you need to contact us, if you don't know what to do after this, uh, you can contact us at churchofnewdestiny at gmail.com. Churchofnewdestiny at gmail.com. God bless you. God bless you. And have a great week ahead. Amen. <laughs>